Hi, I'm Margret. Welcome to part 2 of the introduction to Big O notation. In part 1, we looked at two methods and we determined the complexity by counting the number of steps required for the execution. In this video, we are going to graph the number of steps to build an intuitive understanding of what Big O is all about and how it can be used to classify algorithms based on their scalability. This here is our first graph. On the horizontal axis we have n. n is the number of elements in the array, the input size. On the vertical axis we have steps, the number of steps that have to be executed in order to run the method with input size n. The blue line shows how many steps need to be taken to run the method get last element. In this case it's always 4, regardless how big or small the array is. Now you can see an additional red line. This is the graph corresponding to the method sum. It shows how many steps need to be taken to run the method sum based on a given input n. Notice the positive slope here. The bigger the n, the more steps are required. For two methods, we counted the steps, but there are many more methods out there. Some have a constant number of steps that do not depend on the input size. For example, this one. It requires 25 steps, regardless how big the array is. Other methods might have a number of steps that grow linear with the input size. Here is an example. This graph has a smaller slope than the graph of the method sum, but in both cases the amount of required steps increases with the size of n. Let's have a look at the amount of work that it takes to execute the different methods for input size 3. We can see here the most effort, the most steps are required for the constant graph 25, more than for the graph representing sum, more than for the constant 4 representing get last element, and the graph that takes the least amount of steps is half an n plus 2. Now if I look at input size 7, we can see that things changed. All of a sudden it is the graph representing sum that requires the most effort, the most steps, more than the constant 25. And the yellow and the blue graph have crossed as well. For fairly small input sizes n, a function with linear growth can outperform a constant function. What I'm interested in though is a general trend that allows me to predict which method takes more work and thus more time for sufficiently large input sizes. Let's zoom out to get a bigger picture. Here in the bottom left quadrant you can see the part of the graph that was shown on the prior slides. Let's take one more step out. At this point the grid is so tight that it starts to distract from the graph. Let's just drop it. Notice that we have two groups of functions. The ones that are parallel to the horizontal axis require constant time. They are in big O of 1. The ones that have a positive slope require linear time. They are in big O of n. For small input sizes, we can't predict whether one method outperforms another solely based on the fact that one requires constant time while the other requires linear time. However, for sufficiently large n, methods that require constant time will reliably perform better than those requiring linear time. At this point we have discussed two categories, big O of 1 and big O of n. Let's look at a third category where the number of steps grows with the square of n. 
Let's get rid of the markup and zoom back in on the bottom left to the original detailed view. I'm adding two more graphs. The purple one requires n squared steps. That could, for example, belong to a method with a nested loop where both control variables depend on the input size n. The teal colored graph requires n squared plus 8n plus 7 steps. This could, for example, belong to a method that includes a nested loop and a simple loop. Soon I'm going to zoom out again, but first I want to add a grid and focus the attention on the left part of our display. I'm going to stretch that out over the whole display area. Notice, at this view, we can see input values up to 50. Now I'm ready to zoom out, so far that we can see input values up to 1000. This small gray area down here is the view that you saw on the prior slides. Notice the two new graphs we just added. On the close-up view, they seem quite different, but here they seem virtually identical. That's because they both have the same coefficient for n squared. You can see 1 n squared and also 1 n squared here. And all those n's and 1's are insignificant in comparison. Mere noise. Had we changed the n squared to half n squared, the graph would have moved to the right. Had we changed n squared to 5 n squared, it would have moved to the left. In each case, we can see the characteristic upward bending curve of the quadratic function. Now I switch back to the original graph with n squared and we're going to group those graphs into three categories. Those that require constant time, they're right here at the very bottom, and here we speak of big O of 1. Those that require linear time, big O of n, and those that require quadratic time, big O of n squared.